Welcome everybody. My name is Louisa Burden and I'm the Head of Conservation at the British Museum. I'm very happy to welcome you all to the British Hiri Museum Hiriyama Studio for this symposium to celebrate the work of the Amore Pacific Project for the conservation of the Korean pictorial art at the British Museum. We have a couple of technical notes for you before we start. We have live audio translation and interpretation available today. To listen to this session in Korean, please click on the interpretation button at the bottom of the screen to enable this. To ask us a question, please click on the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen and post your questions, which we will then put to the panel during the Q&A session. We are meeting over two afternoons with pre-recorded talks, followed by live question and answer sessions. These talks offer you a glimpse of the work carried out to conserve some of the Korean paintings here at the British Museum. This project began in 2018 and will be completed in March 2023. It has been a collaboration between British Museum conservators and curators of East Asian art and our British Museum scientists, as well as our, as our colleagues in Korea and elsewhere in the world. We are very grateful to our funders, the Amora Pacific Corporation, and also wish to thank the Korea Foundation, the Amora Pacific Museum, and Mrs. Pian, the Amora Pacific Museum curator, for the support we have had from them throughout this entire project. The British Museum has a long history of conservation of East Asian paintings and the project has integrated into the Hiriyama Studio where this work happens. The Hiriyama Studio was opened as the only conservation and remounting studio in Europe in a European museum dedicated to East Asian pictorial art. It differs from conservation studios in Asia as in it's not culture specific. So it's equipped to carry out conservation treatments and mounting in Chinese, Japanese and now Korean traditions. The international team of experts here support each other and learn and respect the differences between each other's approaches and traditions. The British Museum has approximately 550 Korean drawings and paintings in the collection. The project has included a survey of the Korean paintings which informed decision making as to which painting should be conserved. An early focus in the project was for the folding screens in view of their complexity and the number of their paintings. Later in the work programme, scroll paintings were also surveyed. We have been especially fortunate to have Korean specialists and experts working with us. Scroll mounters came from Korea on a num from a number of studios to participate in both discussions and practical work. Their assistance was a key component of the project and preservation of the paintings here. I take this opportunity to thank everyone who travelled from so far to work with us in London in what were at times difficult circumstances due to the pandemic. Skills and knowledge sharing is one of the key parts of developing conservation practice. And this has been a significant component of this project. A number of seminars were held at this studio and this enabled detailed discussions about approaches, for, for example, for the folding screen conservation. Our colleagues from Korea who came to work with us showed us their skills and the British Museum team and I appreciated the opportunity to see them working and sharing with us their knowledge and experience in this field. Within this project, connections have also been made with skilled artisans in Korea, including such folks as carpenters, textile dyers and traditional paper makers. And I would like to acknowledge this network and thank them all for their contributions. A focused seminar on Korean mounting fabrics ensured correct materials and techniques were considered and purchased for the conservation treatments. 
Finding those skilled artisans and the materials required for the work on the paintings has been vital to ensure the completion of the conservation work. Other outward facing work included contributions to conferences and a three day programme entitled Discovering Korean Art at the British Museum in collaboration with the Korean Cultural Centre in the UK and our own curatorial colleagues. The project conservators' contribution to this were based here at the Hiriyama studio and the delegates joined her here. We currently have a temporary exhibition on the Amore Pacific project on display in the museum and we can share a short film that you would see if you were on gallery. So please welcome and enjoy this short film about the current display. Hello, my name is Sangha Kim, and I am the curator of the Korean collections at the British Museum. I am excited to share with everyone this exhibit titled Conservation in Action, on view from July 2022 to January 2023 at the Korea Foundation Gallery. First, it is important to acknowledge the strong partnership between the British Museum and the Amore Pacific Corporation, as well as the contributions of our collections care team and the many museum departments that made this project a success. This conservation project was initiated in 2017 by my predecessor, Eleanor Hyun, with a five-year grant from the Amore Pacific Corporation, a renowned Korean cosmetics company. The grant enabled the museum to conduct a thorough survey of the Korean painting collection, drawing on the expertise of an international team of scholars. In addition, the funds allowed the creation of a new position at the British Museum, a specialist in Korean painting conservation. This groundbreaking appointment marks the first time a museum outside Korea has had a Korean painting conservator on staff. For the first two years of the program, all folding screens and hanging scrolls, the two most popular formats of Korean painting, underwent a survey to assess their art historical and historical significance, as well as their physical condition. Over the past five years, the museum's Korean painting conservator, Mi Jung Kim Merande, regularly visited Korea to secure materials for conservation. Finding the correct tools and materials is critical to ensuring high-quality conservation that is also specific to Korean cultural traditions. The biggest obstacle we encountered was finding adequate mounting and conservation material. Mounting silk, in particular, should be of the weaving method, pattern, and color to complement the painting's period and style. Such silks are difficult to find even in Korea. It took me several trips to find the right materials and to build a relationship with the silk, workshop, and paper mills. Out of the 13 Korean paintings that were selected to be preserved during the project, eight paintings are currently on display in Korean gallery. The paintings that were restored were chosen based on their historical importance and urgency of the treatment needed. What was particularly striking about the 19th century depiction of the orchid was a traditional painting technique with a skillful brush strike and they both the evoke the subject, reveal the character of the artist. This subject choice and style was popular among the scholar artists of the late Joseon period, but today orchid paintings from the period are extremely rare. When acquired by the museum, this painting was unmounted on paper dyed in the greenish tint with a sculpted gold leaf. The main task in the restoring this painting was finding an appropriate mount format. We chose a school mount characteristic of the late Joseon period with a white border enhanced by the blue silk accent at the top and the bottom of the painting and the traditional Korean metal fittings at the top. This work titled the Flying Geese dates to the late 20th centuries and presents different conservation challenges from that of the orchids. In keeping with its modern style, no mountain skills were intended here. 
Instead, the problem were the brown stains that ruined the artist's intents of the pure white ground. Our main focus, therefore, was in the bleaching and remounting. The scenes of life the painting is probably the last two panels of the what was originally a folding screen of the ten panels. The painting depicts the important events of the virtuous man. When first found, there was significant concern with the mounting structures being extremely damaged, as well as the covering mount silk being in such bad condition that it had to be reproduced and remounted. Interestingly, the mount was the original one made in the late chosen period, with no traces of the previous treatment whatsoever. This huge 12 panel screen will welcome you when going up the stairs to the Korean gallery. This highly decorative mid 19th century screen portrays Confucius virtues. The five of Confucius virtues was the most time and energy consuming due to its enormous size and its great fragility. The skin also had several missing areas with the painting silk being torn in various places. After consolidation of the unstable pigmented areas, it was dismantled, the older lining paper were carefully removed, and after there was completely repaired, all 12 paintings were lined again with the dyed Chinese shum paper and Korean mulberry paper Hanji, and the later remounted onto the inner frame with as many of the original part retained as possible, such as the mount silk and the metal fittings. The conserved painting in the gallery reflect the culmination of five years of painstaking analysis and restoration. This has been a major accomplishment, and I invite you to celebrate the painting's debut for is their first time being displayed in the gallery. Our program today starts with our project conservator, Meijun Kim Marinde, delving more deeply into the areas already mentioned as she talks about surveys, treatments, fieldwork and discoveries. Our second talk is about the Korean paintings collection at the British Museum and will be presented by the British Museum's curator of Korean collections, Sang Ha Kim. Please do send us questions for, us for the live Q&A session, which will be after both talks, and post them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. So I'd now like to introduce you to our first speaker, Meijun Kim Marinde is the, is the Amore Pacific Project Conservator for Korean Paintings at the British Museum. She studied art history at Hong University, Seoul, and an MA in Conservation Restoration of Cultural Property at the Pantheon Sorbonne University. In 2018, she received a PhD from Paris Sorbonne University on the mounting of Joseon Dynasty Korean paintings. She trained in traditional East Asian methods of conservation and remounting at the Hirayama Studio at the British Museum, first as a student and then as a doctoral fellow. Mei Jung has also completed two 12-month conservative contracts working here as well. So welcome Mei Jung for her spot talk for this afternoon. Hello, my name is Mei Jung Kim Marande. I am the Amor Pacific Conservator for Korean Painting in British Museum and the project manager of the Amara Pacific project. On this occasion, I would like to thank all the people who made this project possible, specifically all my colleagues at the British Museum and the Amara Pacific Corporation, a renowned Korean cosmetics company, as well as all the Korean experts who contribute to this project. Today, I will be discussing the Amor Pacific project at the British Museum, as well as giving an overview of the achievements, fieldworks, and the discoveries made throughout this project. In 2018, a poster for the Amor Pacific Conservator for Korean Victoria Art was established to carry out the project, the first law of its kind of in any Western museum. This position was a central part of the, not only this project, 
but also to study of the Korean art. And I am honored to have been appointed as the conservator of Korean paintings since 2018. This position also ensures that British Museum will be a unique European center of the excellence in this field. Through this project, the British Museum was able to spend four years researching and conserving key objects of the pictorial art from its 4,000 200 strong Korean collection, which include the paintings, prints, and art works on silk and cotton. The Amorphous Project's main goal has been to urgently address the lack of the knowledge and skills in Europe and North America, where several museums with a Korean collection do not have the ability to carry out research and conservation on the object that they own. With this project, the British Museum worked closely with the Amorphous Museum of Art and collaborated with the scholars, curators, conservators, craft makers, and artisans based in Korea. The foundings from this project will be a vital resource for Western Museum and academic institutions, cares, and research of their collection to be enjoyed by future generations. The British Museum's Hiram Studio was a central part of the commencement of this project. It was often with the spot of the Hirayama Hiko in 1994 as the only conservation and remounting studio in any European division dedicated to Eastern Asian pictorial art. The Hirayama Studio offers uh, from the conservation studios in Asia as it is not culturally specific but later is an outfit to uh, carry out the conservation treatments and the mountings in both the Chinese and Japanese traditions and the now Koreans as well. Hiraima Studio Associates can benefit from techniques and traditions that would have been outside their scope of the influence in corresponding studios in China, Japan, and Korea. With the opening of the museum's World Conservation and Exhibition Centers in 2014, home to the departments of the collection care and scientific research, conservators working in the Hirama Studio now have the ability to gain access to the expertise of the colleagues working in areas customarily found in Western museums. This helps to inform and broaden the expertise shared across the museum. The project that began in 2018 with an in-depth survey of the Korean pictorial collection. After studying the various types of Korean pictorial works in the collection and reviewing their current storage conditions, I developed surveys, uh, criteria, and format that would best serve the needs of the object and the aim of the project. Thinking strategically about time and complexity it was agreed that the survey would begin with the folding screens of all traditional pictorial format. Folding screen with their complicated forms often require the most time, materials, and the planning to completely remount. As such, it seems prudent to assess the folding screens first to allow for adequate time to plan and conduct the necessary conservation treatment and remounting that would be selected as a, a result of the assessment. Following a prearranged schedule, 12 Korean screens in the collection was uh, delivered to Hiram Studio for my assessment and the world survey. Along with our conservation focused assessment, its screen was examined against their current object record in order to verify accuracy of the database information such as dimensions with and without mounting, descriptions, materials, techniques, and object records were updated accordingly. After finishing the screen assessments in 2018, it was decided to focus on score both the hanging scrolls and hand scrolls in the collection. The object in scroll format range from the early Joseon to contemporary paintings 
and the uh, totals of the 51 were assessed during the period. Photography of the screens in school was undertaken and the images and files were updated to the resumes database, which will be made available through the British Museum database this year. This accessible resource is an additional outcome of the wider project as a number of the screens and scrolls did not have any photographic documentation. After the initial assessment, 10 screens were selected to be focus of the first seminar of the project in July 2018. Of the 10, two screens, the five lights and scenes of life were the object there was a prioritized due to the, the current physical states preventing that themselves from being dis displayed and in need of the immediate conservation treatment. In addition to these uh, two screens, several other paintings were identified for conservation mounting as part of the project. During the survey, I discovered issues with some of the paintings such as a light layer of dust, small unstable areas, and the signs of the past pace presence. In those instances, I conducted a dry cleaning, consolidation treatment, and carefully removed residue traces. For the screens with the historic pest issues, I collected the pest remnants for identification by integrated the pest manager and the prepare the screens to receive the future treatment as a precaution. In keeping with the survey, the focus of the inaugural year's America's Big Project, annual seminars focused on the screen paintings. Following discussions with the America's Big Museum of the Art, Art historian Cho in -su, who is a professor at the National Korean University of the Arts, was invited to attend the two-day seminar. Since the Professor Cho is a, a painting specialist who had assessed, evaluated, and conducted the conservation of numerous Korean paintings, the seminar's aim was to closely examine the 10 selected screens and to discuss each object's historical context, materiality, condition, and current mounting state. Having identified the five lights in the sense of life as candidates for extensive, extensive the conservation treatment, the second day of the seminar was dedicated to examining and discussing these two things. After the first year, it became apparent that an investigation into Korean mountain favorites would be needed in order to properly determine which kinds of the favorites should be procured and utilized in the remounting. A plan was conceived for a two days workshop seminar focusing on Korean textiles together with invited textile conservator and scientists to examine and discuss mountain favorites. The objective was to identify the type of the fabric used for painting and mounting, such as a silk, remy, hand, and cotton. To identify that there is a weaving methods and patterns, to identify dyes and dyeing methods used, and finally to find appropriate methods to preserve damaged original silk. The first day consists of the seminars with the three presentations and was open to museum staff. The second day was a closed session with the participants only, and we utilized the day to assess and discuss in the following three objects, as seen on the PowerPoint slide here. Throughout the survey and during the time when I, we identified the condition and the conservation needs of the several paintings, it became apparent that the museum would need to secure a stock of the paper and silk to proceed with the treatment and mounting. 
the quality of the suitability of the utmost importance for the long-term preservation of the paintings. It became apparent then an investigation into the production and type of the paper and silk would be necessary before purchasing. The type of investigation can be only be conducted with visits to production centers and the meetings with artisan in South Korea. And so it was agreed that I would dedicate time during the, my scheduled trip to Korea in the winter of the 2018 and the 2019 and spring of the 2022 to learn about and inspect the production centers in South Korea. During my field work in Korea, I observed and worked along expert textile dyer, Ms. Lee Jong Nam, and the maker of metal fittings, Kim Kyu Bong. I also requested a uh, dyeing the workshop with uh, Mr. Jong Kan Che in Naju to dye historical cotton blue with a natural indigo dye. I will now discuss a new purchase made for both materials and equipments needed for this project. During my field work, several specialist materials such as wooden frames, textiles, and the paper for the mounts in this project had been purchased. I have also continued to acquire the Chinese and Japanese papers required for my treatment in addition to the various Korean papers. I made a customized order with the help of the British Senior Conservatory of Chinese Painting, this is a QGNC, for Chinese shunk paper, which is used for lining and infilling. And the British Museum Senior Conservatory of the Japanese Painting, Ms. Kyoko Kusunoki, for Japanese papers are called Maniaishi, which is used for underpapering wooden inner frames and it needed to carry out the remounting operation for selected screen. In June 2021, I arranged with the metal toilet limits for the installation and the calibration of the new pH meter. In October 2021, we purchased a new Hilux 3D video microscope and designed a bespoke bridge for the Amorphis project in the Hiram Studio. The microscope is needed to closely observe the condition of the artwork before and after treatment and to research painting materials and the structures. It also helps to make a conservation treatment more precise and allows the conservators to create high resolution photo documentation. During the first year of the activity, 10 works were identified as a required in conservation. These paintings were chosen based on their historical importance and the urgency of the treatment needed. In second year, the conservation plans were devised and treatment began. Now I will discuss each object in more detail. This is the first object to be conserved as part of our project, a 20th century that incurred the stains from its wooden lattice support. To treat this, we invited uh, Mr. Cha byung of Hogo Studio, formerly a conservator at the National Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art, Korea. We collaborated in the conservation of this painting over a two weeks period in June 2019. In keeping with its modern style, no mounting scale was intended here. The problem was the brown stains that ruins that the artist intense of the of pure white ground. Our main focus therefore was a breaching and remounting, reusing historical frame and support. The frame had a areas of wear, and I consult with uh, Alex Owens, a British Museum object conservator, and uh, Hannah James, a collection manager, so that the frame was uh, treated and uh, cleaned. This uh, conservator painting is uh, currently displayed in the Korean Foundation Gallery. 
This painting, one of the earliest Korean paintings to enter the museum's collection, at which time it was unmounted. It has remained rows since 1881 and had never been displayed. It posed an interesting technical problem because of the handwritten inscription in iron gold ink on the backing paper. This ink is known to corrode and stain paper in presence of the moisture. As the inscription is likely to be linked to the previous owner, William Anderson, and indicates painting production date of the 1876. The backing paper was retained following its carefully removal of the backing paper. I use a nano restore gel, a new materials used by the Western Paper Conservation Team at the British Museum to gently sell moisture and remove the remaining lining paper. After infilling the missing areas with the Chinese shrimp paper and applying a new lining, I mount it in album format for the display in the Korean gallery. I will now discuss the five lights and the sense of light, which were the both selected for the cooperation with the Korean Fishing Conservator. The two screen, uh, there is a 19th century mountains and thus, and also important example of the pre 28th century uh, mounting method and styles. Hence the remounting process reveals important and interesting information with regards of the late Joseon screen mountings. After the examination, treatment plans and schedules were dropped for the screens as a securing appropriate the Korean silk had been challenging and we were to retain historical materials as much as possible. We decided to reuse some of the original mountain silk. Mrs. Park ji of the Jongde Studio and her former student, Mrs. Jo-Hune, now conservated the National Archives of Korea, the British Museum were invited to the British Museum for two days in 2019 and one week in 2022 to collaborate on treatment. This a highly decorative that made the 19th century screen portrayed the confusion the virtues. This painting was the most time and energy consuming due to the, its enormous size and the, its a great fragility. The screen now welcomed the visitors going up the stairs to the Korean gallery. The scenes of life the painting consists of the last two panels of the, what must have uh, originally been a golden screen of 10 panels. The painting depicts the important events of the Birchers Man. On occasion to the British Museum, there was significant concern with the mountain structures that have been extremely damaged, as well as the covering bound set to be in such bad condition. If the fabric had to be reproduced and the painting were remounted. Importantly, the mount was evidently original, made in the late Joseon period with no trace of the previous treatment whatsoever. The scenes of life was uh, scanned by the Function Foundation for Conservation of the 2019 and produced a high resolution image that also conveyed the surface of uh, contourings and depth. The results of these images are on the Foundation's website and, uh, and are linked to the museum's social media accounts. After which I have been taken special care in the treatment and remounting of this uh, uh, screen, I separate the paintings uh, from the wooden frame, use a nano restore gel. I carefully detach the mounting scales and the papers layer by layer in the reverse order of the how they had been applied to understand the original physical method for full screen mounting. I removed deposit also using nano restore gel. I met Mr. Sung Jong Ju of the Gochang Studio for the second time during the, my trip to Seoul in December 
2019 to discuss the condition of sense of life and the future collaboration on its treatments remounting. The positive collaboration focused on selecting silk required for remounting. By mutual agreement, it's soon and I decided to reuse some of the original mounting silk due to the problem of acquiring appropriate Korean silk. The lack of available mounting silk had been a pressing issue and a significant obstacle in remounting this uh, chosen painting. The covering silk was very damaged and the ordering the reproduction of the same pattern silk was not straightforward. However, replica silk was commissioned in Japan and its reproduction was applied for the remounting. Following the survey initiated in year one, three screens require the immediate conservation, especially pigment consolidation. Because of the Korean painting relied on thickly applied paint layers, a lot of the, my time of spent on this pigment consolidation. I investigated the most suitable housing for the portrait of Che Jae Gung based on my research into historical scroll storage box case. I divided it on plan to reproduce the case, used the house to related versions of the portrait painting, which are held in the Suwon Hwasang Museum located in Suwon. At the beginning of the 2019, I received the official permission to produce a reproduction the, from the director of the Suwon Hwasang Museum. During the, my trip to Korea in December 2019, I identified the numerous artisans who agreed to collaborate to produce the case, carpenter, locker, maker, ornaments, maker, dyer, and tailor. I then carried out of the workshop investigating the historical case at the Suwan Hwasang Museum to ensure the right level of the technical information was uh, communicated. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, this uh, project had to be postponed indefinitely. All this accumulation of research, conservation, field work, surveys, and purchase of the materials have resulted into the display at the Korean Foundation Gallery. The display detail that have been planned by Sang Ah Kim, the curator for the Korean collections at the British Museum, myself, collection care and the conservation preventive teams who have conducted the condition assessment of the works and the advice for the installation of the exhibition. The display open on 23 July 2022 at the Korean Foundation Gallery to share with everyone this exhibit titled Conservation in Action. Out of the 13 Korean paintings that were consulted during the project, eight paintings were currently on display in the Korean gallery, alongside elements of historical mounts, mounting materials, and tools. In addition to conservation and the preservation of the Korean cultural heritage, one of the main objectives of the uh, Amorphistic project had been to provide and enable training, developing expertise around the conservation of the Korean pictorial art. In keeping with this objective, Alino Hyun and I conducted the Korean Foundation's mission internship program. The Korean Foundation was willing to partner with the British Museum in offering a conservation internship for the first time. 2020 was the first year the British Museum host an uh, internship supported by the Korean Foundation, where the intern was based in conservation. Yu Kyung Kim, who had been selected in 2019, started her six months internship in February 2022. Over the initial internship period, I provided Yu Kyung basic training in assisting their practical work at the studio 
suffered and supervised her research in the Korean paper Hanji, used for Korean pictorial art, focusing on accumulating technical data. She also researched equipment required for the amorphous projects such as a pH meter. During these last four years, I attended and participated in various conferences and webinars organized by national and international organizations. The following the two I will talk about were the most notable. This project continues to garner more attention globally, and I was invited to participate and give a talk at a symposium entitled Conserving East Asian Paintings in the 21st Century that was organized and hosted by the Metropolitan Museum of Art in June 2019. This was the third in a series of the symposia held in the US focusing on Eastern Asian painting conservation. But in previous symposiums, in this series, the Korean paintings had not been discussed due to the lack of the participants. So this was the first occurrence of the including Korea in this symposium series. I introduced the Our Festival project as well as uh, presenting some of my findings on to its own paintings. In 2019, a three-day seminar program entitled the Discovered Korean Art at the British Museum was uh, divided in conjunction with the Korea Culture Center UK. The seminar focused on Korean cultural heritage and I introduced Korean painting formats and mounting materials. I held my lectures in Hiram Studio and used the museum's Korean paintings and sample that I made and acquired in Korea during the, my teaching. Thank you for your attention. And I would like to reiterate some my thanks to all those involved in this project because without their help and expertise that this project would not have been able to reach this far. Thank you. Our second speaker today is Sangha Kim. Sangha joined the British Museum on, in October 2021 as curator of Korean collections. After majoring in Chinese language and literature for her BA and MA at Korea University in Seoul, she moved to the US to pursue an MA in art history at the University of Oregon. She then spent three years at the Portland Art Museum as a curatorial fellow in Asian art, where she curated exhibitions on historical and contemporary Korean and Chinese art. Alongside her curatorial work, she is currently pursuing a PhD at SOAS University London. I hope you enjoy her speech. Hello, I am Sang Akin, curator for the Korean collections at the British Museum. Thank you everyone for taking the time to attend this symposium. I'm grateful for this opportunity to talk about the British Museum's Korean painting collection and to share stories about some of the works that were conserved in this project. Before I start, I would like to sincerely thank Amore Pacific and Korea Foundation for their generous support for this groundbreaking project. With this grant, we were able to carry out a thorough survey of the Korean painting collection and bring some of them back to life. First, let me briefly talk about the Korean collection at the British Museum in general. When the British Museum was established in 1753, the founding collection of Sir Hans Sloan did not include any Korean objects. The Korean collection was first included in the 19th century, and it, it has grown significantly until now, having more than 4,000 objects. The Korean collection is divided into the coins and medals department and the Asia department, and we have around 2,000 non-coin objects. And among them, pictorial art makes up around 25% of the collection. To briefly go over the painting collection's growth, the first Korean painting entered the museum in the late 19th century, and it slowly grew through donations and purchases. 
This slide shows some major acquisitions of paintings throughout the time. The collection greatly expanded in the 1990s before the opening of the Korean Gallery in 2000. Then curator and now the keeper of the Asia department, Jane Portal purchased a large number of 20th century paintings and prints, including a group of shamanist paintings. In the 2000s, following the two visits to North Korea by Jane Portal, the collection gained North Korean paintings and prints which added a touch of distinctiveness to the collection. The first group of Korean paintings came in 1881 from the collection of Dr. William Anderson. Dr. Anderson was an English surgeon who served as the director of the Imperial Naval Medical College in Tokyo in the 1870s. He started collecting Asian pictures during this period and built an extensive collection of Japanese prints and paintings, as well as Utwag illustrated books. In 1881, he sold more than 2,000 of his collection to the British Museum. He also wrote several influential books, including The Pictorial Arts of Japan and other writings published in 1886. This manuscript focuses on Japanese painting but he also allotted one page about Korean painting. He said, quote, little can be said with reference to Korean art, partly on account of its close re resemblance to the art of China, and partly because of the difficulty in obtaining access either to authentic historical facts or to a sufficient number of representative specimens. It is, however, beyond doubt that Korean art in general could claim in ancient times a far higher position than that to which it is now entitled, end quote. As seen from this quote, Dr. Anderson acknowledged the significance of Korean art, but at the same time, he recognized the difficulty of obtaining them, which is almost the same today. In his 1886 book, Dr. Anderson provided a list of five Korean paintings he sold to the museum. And you see those paintings on this slide. Except for the falcon painting on the left, the landscape, portrait of a nobleman, and a pair of orchids were conserved through the Amore Pacific project. These four paintings had remained unmounted and rolled since they entered the museum in 1881. Now these paintings were remounted in the format of the album, window mount, and hanging scroll, respectively. We can trace an interesting journey of the paintings from the history of their previous owner. Dr. Anderson's Korean painting collection can be a window of understanding what was available and popular in the Japanese market in the late 19th century. And one example is this Falcon painting. This was painted by the artist named Yu Unhong, a court painter in the 19th century. Most of his surviving paintings are figures in a landscape setting or genre paintings. But here, instead of depicting human figures, a fierce falcon is sitting on a pine tree branch. On the top left, here the title uh, uh, reads a hero standing on its own followed by the date of the painting's production, which is 1853. The inscription at the bottom here tells a story about who painted this for whom. The right part of the inscription is Joseon, the name of the Korean kingdom from the late 14th to the early 20th century. And the left is Shisan, the artist's name. Paintings with an inscription of Joseon can often be found uh, in Japan because they were made for and exported to Japanese customers. Among these paintings embracing the inscription of Joseon, one of the most popular subject matters was a falcon and tiger. These animals were admired for their bravery. They were also believed to have auspicious power, especially in Japan. This British Museum's painting from the Anderson Collection shows an example that was meant for consumption in the Japanese market. 
Uh, these two paintings are also from the Anderson collection, bear an interesting inscription on the reverse, probably by Dr. Anderson. It reads, drawn by the Korean artist who accompanied the Korean ambassador to Edo in 1876. After a few decades of severance of diplomatic relations with Japan, Chosun resumed dispatching missions to Japan in 1876. At the time, a court painter, Kim Yong Won, was a member of the envoy. Uh, the landscape painting on the left itself is unsigned, but the attribu attribution was made based on Dr. Anderson's inscription. Unfortunately, there are not many surviving landscape, landscape paintings by Kim Yong Won. So it is not easy to compare and authenticate this painting. However, the fact that Dr. Anderson's note is contemporary evidence and that Kim Yong-won is known to have traveled to Edo in 1876 lends credit to this attribution. Uh, the pair of orchids painting on the right bear two seals here, which uh, could be evidence of the artist. It also has the same inscription as the landscape painting, indicating that the artist is Kim Yong-won. However, this work has less certainty about the attribution. Because the characters of the seals here do not match the artist's name, so for this work, more research is required for the attribution. Uh, from now on, I am going to focus on two paintings that have just been conserved through the Amore Pacific project. Dating to the 19th century, both are highly colored folding screen examples of what might be broadly categorized as figures in a landscape or genre painting. Both works reflect the Confucian ideals that were embraced by the court and upper class of Joseon period society, about which I will talk more later. And perhaps, most interestingly, both the screens appear to be regarded as models after original designs by Kim Hong-do, a prolific court painter who is considered Korea's greatest master of genre painting. Uh, this screen has 12 panels around 170 centimeter high and more than four meters wide. Each panel depicts figures accompanied by architectural and landscape elements. Uh, the navy color and purple color mounting silks were cleaned and reused. And I believe Mi Jung will talk about the conservation pro uh, process of this painting in more detail in our talk tomorrow. Uh, on the reverse of the screen, there is a title slip attached, which means five Confucian virtues. In each panel depicts exemplifying stories of Confucian virtues. So here are uh, five Confucian virtues are about uh, relationships, relationships between the king and his servants, father and son, husbands and wives, uh, the elders and the young, and finally between friends. This slide shows panels one to six at the top and panel seven through 12 at the bottom from the right to the left. For example, the third panel depicts a boy holding a hammer while a fish is jumping out of the river. This boy, whose name was Wang Xiang, lost his mother when he was young. His stepmother mistreated him, but the boy still respected his parents from his heart. One day in the cold winter, his stepmother was sick and said, she wanted to eat fresh fish. Wang Xiang went out to the river and when he was about to break the ice and jump into the water to catch fish, the ice melted all of a sudden and two carp jumped out of the river so that the boy was able to cook fish for his sick stepmother. So here the message is great devotion to the parents. All 12 stories on the screen originated from the Woodblock print book, Illustrated Stories of Five Confucian Virtues. The volumes were published in 1797, 
under the patronage of King Jeongjo, the 22nd king of the Joseon dynasty. King Jeongjo's concern was revitalizing Confucian ideology, which was the backbone of the country from its beginning. The book describes 150 exemplary models reflecting the Confucian values from ancient Chinese and Korean literature. And the book was made by selecting stories from previous illustrated Confucian virtues books published earlier in the Joseon period. So here to help people's understanding of the stories, the book contains the most memorable scene of the story besides the text. It is highly likely that Kim Hongdo, the favorite um, court painter of King Jeongjo, contributed to the design of the illustration of the book. Uh, the British Museum screen took the woodblock, print, uh, woodblock books illustration that we've seen in the previous slide as uh, its model. All three pictures here depict the story of Wang Xiang catching fish for his stepmother. And here we can see how the pictorial organization changed over time. Uh, the one on the left is from the illustration, illustrated stories of the three bones originally published in 1434. The illustration here employs a simultaneous narrative depicting several episodes of this one boy portrayed in a single unified pictorial space. By the time when we get uh, the 18th century version in the middle, some of the visual clutter was edited in a way and there is the focus of a single moment, a uh, single most memorable moment, which is the breaking the ice in the river to capture the fish. Uh, it would be interesting to think about uh, the question of selection of the moment and how to choose the right moment that encapsulates the point of the whole story. And considering the fact that the purpose of this book was to educate people, the selection of one moment of a story should be the most striking and easy to be remembered. Uh, following the 1797 book as a model, the British Museum's painting narrows the focus to a single moment, but the painting added colors which suit the context of the screen as decorative furniture. Compositionally, the painting's artist also closely followed this 18th century book in the placement of key motifs of the country residence, the zigzag path to the river, the youth breaking eyes, and even some surrounding trees and shrubs. What the artist added to fill some of the tall, narrow screen format is here uh, the dis distant mountain peaks. So to reiterate, uh, there are two types of adaptation taking place here. One, subject matter, which we may argue makes for more drama and clarity and two, modifications of the setting to fit the tall and narrow screen format. Uh, here on the right, uh, uh, we have another example of a screen painting of the same theme from the National Museum of Korea collection. And both the British Museum painting and the National Museum of Korea painting are clearly modeled after the 18th century printed book. The subject matter of the five Confucian virtues and its pictorial organization became a type that gets repeated again throughout the 19th century and 20th century. And here we see how a certain pictorial layout from the same source is adapted and adjusted depending on different physical formats. Uh, the NMK painting here on the right is a 10 panel screen and there are two overlap stories with the British Museum painting. Uh, if we see uh, the British Museum painting here first, uh, this is the second panel of the 12, uh, 12 panel screen, and it has uh, three registers of composition. Here, we have this diagonal pavilion at the bottom, and then a crane and a man in the middle ground, 
and then the landscape in the upper register. It does not include any inscription of title or text, assuming that audiences of the painting already know about the story. The pictorial panel of the NMK a painting, which is at, at the right, is in a shorter and wider format than the British Museum example. Instead of including landscape at the top of the painting, it added the title of the story in Chinese character here, and also adds uh, the description of the story in both Chinese and Korean. So here, the text and their visualized message maximize the didactic purpose of the painting. Uh, of the five Confucian virtues, stories about filial piety were the most often painted. There are also screen painting only depicted scenes of filial piety. The subject matter of filial piety was a popular theme throughout history in East Asia. This famous early example has a picture of paragons of filial piety painted on a locker basket. And this shows that the stories were painted and used as decoration as early as the third century. The theme of filial piety was also popular in Japan. It was a key subject matter of the Kano school who served the painters for military aristocracy who embraced a Confucianist ideology. Here is uh, the painting of one of the stories of filial piety by the most renowned, the founder of the Kano school. And Kano school continue to make these types of painting of this subject matter in modern times. So here, we know that Confucian ideology, including filial piety, was widely known both among educated classes and then more broadly speaking to the general public across East Asia and how they were visualized in different ways. Going back to the British Museum screen, an interesting discovery was made during the disassembly process in which we found household registers from Hamgyongdo province in the second half of the 19th century as the painting's backing paper. Last year, the Art Institute of Chicago also discovered similar documents in their conservation project. So the reuse of older documents for backing paper is not unusual. Uh, these administration documents help state the painting. And also they show us that the mounting of the mounting of this screen was original to the painting. In many cases, folding screens are remounted when the frame is worn out. So there are discrepancies in age between the painting and mounting. And after this finding, the frame also became an important index for understanding the pre 20th century mounting style. We also can think about the folding screen as a format. Folding screens were used as a backdrop for the aristocracy's room or background of rituals. So it functions as a marker of status. Also the subject matter could be associated with the character's self image. So imagine the owner of the screen seated in front of it and facing his guests. In a sense, the patron's image is projected onto the screen as though he is immersed in enacting the tale. He himself becomes a paragon of virtues. Uh, when we see other paintings of the Confucian virtues, we see all different variations, which show different stories in different order. This combination was possible uh, due to the nature of the folding screen. Independent stories could be freely selected and arranged according to the customer's needs if there was a model sketch. So far, we've seen a screen with no fixed sequence. And here we have a different situation, which has a distinct sequence to show a clear narrative structure. The painting that I will introduce now is a two panel folding screen depicting an idealized biography of a scholar official. In this case, it is not based on Chinese classics but specifically rooted in Joseon dynasty rituals. 
The subject matter can be found in uh, both on eight panels and 10 panel screens. And episodes are depicted in chronological order from right to left. In this theme, we see two important aspects, is private life and public life. The scenes of private life uh, include his first birthday and wedding and so forth. And the public life uh, is his process through a civil examination and awards, and finally the celebration of the 60th anniversary of each. And this concludes two aspects of his life. When we look at the painting more closely, on the right panel, we see the 60th anniversary of the wedding of this old couple in their very late 70s or 80s. The bride in the red robe and the groom in the green robe are standing in front of the ritual table. There is a folding screen of pianis as the backdrop, which symbolizes wealth and prosperity. And in a marriage, having many offspring could mean prosperity, and around the bride and groom are their children and grandchildren. The scene on the left is the picture of the 60th anniversary of passing state examination. The protagonist is probably in his 80s or even 90s. Uh, the number 60 is very auspicious as the full cycle of the Chinese zodiac calendar. Also celebrating the 60th anniversary of these two events means longevity, as well as a great success in your career. So this painting embraces the highest blessing of life. So two panels of the British Museum painting are the ninth and 10th panel of what would have originally been a 10 panel screen. In the disassembly process, we found inscriptions of nine and 10 on the backside of each painting. Also, there is an intact work at the National Museum of Korea, which further proves that these are the ninth and the 10th panels of this narrative. Uh, let's look at the wedding scene again. The wedding ceremony takes place in the upper part of the scene here and uh, where the family is gathered around the wedding. And there are two uh, large trees in the courtyard. And there is a building here on the lower left that has a long hall. And we see a party enjoying the festivities. It is believed that Kim Hong Do started to paint this subject matter in the late 18th century to celebrate the life of well-known officials. However, the work idealizes life in part by extending it into this extreme old age and so it is possible that their descendants would have commissioned a series of scenes as wishful thinking about the idealized life affairs to, of their ancestors. The painting on the left is on a panel screen in the National Museum of Korea. And there is a date and a sign and seal of the artist here above the roof of the main building. So this work is considered to be painted by Kim Hong Do in 1781. And when we compare the Kim Hong Do model on the left to the British Museum painting on the right, we can see there is a fairly close sharing of pictorial organization and composition. And the BM screen looks back ultimately to a Kim Hong Do painting as a model. Once again, we have a case where original work very strongly attributed to Kim Hong Do a standard that was copied by the next generation of painters, including, including the painter of the British Museum screen. Here at the celebration of the 60th anniversary of passing the state examination, the man is riding a palaquin surrounded by his sons. What I want to call your attention to is the man wearing a pink robe with a special flower cap. The pink robe was only allowed on high ranking officials who held higher than senior three rank, which is a top fifth rank among the 18 in total. We can see this pink robe from the portrait in the British Museum's collection here. Uh, this person being portrayed was a successful scholar official in the 18th century. 
the painting on the upper right here is a party scene celebrating their long and successful life with colleagues who passed the state examination 60 years ago. And we see all of them wearing pink robes. Uh, the paper flower that the man is putting on his cap was granted by the king. Usually it was given to a person who gained first place in the state examination. And the king also granted this, this special flower to a person who celebrated the 60th anniversary. If we consider once again, the placement of the screen in a scholar official residence and the idea that the owner projects himself into the picture, here we see his aspiration for high office, longevity, wealth, and many of spring. These two examples of folding screens, which was a popular format in the late Joseon period, both depict a genre scene closely related to the dominant Confucian philosophy. And both of them appear to be based on models established in the late 18th century. The Amore Pacific Conservation Project has brought back to life these stories that embody the self fashioning of Korean scholar official of the late Joseon dynasty. And although the tales were originally intended for a limited audience, that is, the male elite, the values embodied here have become deeply embedded in Korean culture to this day. Uh, before this project, many Korean paintings could not be displayed due to their physical condition. This project added eight paintings to the collection, which means a lot to the British Museum. The gallery is currently displaying these paintings for the first time. And I hope you will join us celebrate their debut if you can make a trip to the British Museum. We are grateful to all those who made it possible to bring these paintings to visitors to the museum and throughout our website to audiences around the world. Thank you. Well, thank you both for those really fascinating presentations. I know that Sangha wanted to make a little update to her presentation, so I'm going to hand over to Sangha for, for that update. Okay, before we start a Q&A session, I want to clarify one of my slides. Uh, I want to add to my presentation that the recent finding has revealed that the scenes of life uh, painting in the National Museum of Korea that you are looking at from the screen uh, that I showed in my presentation may not be by Kim Hongdo because uh, there is an inscription on the top above the roof and um, one of the Chinese characters used there in the inscription may not have been used in the 18th century. So according to this research, uh, this inscription is considered to be added in the early 20th century. How, however, we should consider the fact that uh, the reason for this attribution may be largely based on uh, his reputation, Kim Hongdo's reputation uh, for genre painting in the late Joseon period. And even though the original painting was not by him, we can imagine how his works inspired uh, these subsequent painters in the late, uh, 19th and 20th centuries uh, in terms of depicting scenes of events filled with people. Thank you, Sang. That's fascinating to hear that in that more recent research as well. Wonderful. Thank you. So we are about to go into our Q&A session. Please do carry on adding your questions to, to the question and answer uh, box at the bottom of your screens. And we will try and include as many as we possibly can this afternoon. So I'm going to start us off with a question from Soa McCormick. Um, who says, thank you very much for your informative presentation, Dr. Kim. Um, she is curious about the way of displaying Korean multi-panel folding screens. She notices that many South Korean museums these days show their folding screens flat rather than zigzagged. And this is following the rediscovered Korean tradition through early 20th century Korean photographs as well as illustrations. So it is curious about your thoughts about this rediscovered way of displaying Korean folded screens. I'm assuming that's the flat way uh, from a conservator's 
perspective? What is your thinking about displaying flat as opposed to in the zigzag? Because especially the folding screen that you mentioned. Yes, it, uh, the folding screen, the display method is uh, several things. This one is that uh, we can uh, discover the, from the very uh, documented uh, folding screen is uh, the, this uh, depicting the uh, very uh, loyal uh, festive. In this month, uh, the method is that uh, we can uh, display the flat or zigzag or sometimes uh, rounded. A several method, it, because uh, the accordant forms can adopt is a space uh, given. So if it's a space much more open and large, we can open the maximum. But if we can, uh, we should adjust uh, someone is uh, some uh, space limited, we can make uh, some kind of the L shape or, or we can do uh, like this, this kind of shape or zigzag. This kind of things, we can observe the painting within painting, Korea. <laughs> So, but it's, uh, if we uh, display always uh, like this in flat, of course, it's a long time. It's not really good. The uh, folding screen uh, designed originally is not exposed uh, permanently. So just in, occasionally, we can uh, open and uh, use and then it will close and then we conserve the, some uh, place. Of course, we can find the, some uh, the uh, family is uh, decorated with the folding screen, not always at the moment. Thank you very much. And Sanger, from a, from a curatorial perspective, having these different shapes, how, how, does, how does your thinking about the displays, uh, how is that impacted by what you can do with the screens? I think it depends on what type of folding screen, like painting, on the folding screen, for example, uh, our five panels, uh, five Confucian virtue or scenes of life, they have separate paintings on each panel. So in that case, it's okay to put like zigzag or flat. But if the painting is connected in all panels, maybe from the viewer's perspective, it's better to put flat. So it really depends. Fascinating. Thank you. Um, for Sanger, uh, how does the British Museum collection of Korean paintings compare to other similar collections outside of Korea? Mm, similar collection. Mm. So we'll see. Uh, I would say the British Museum is fortunate to have relatively large and good quality of collection. Um, as I mentioned in my presentation, we have over 4,000 objects and more than 2,000 are coins and metal department. And uh, in Asia department, we have around 500. So that's relatively good size. Mm. But uh, how can I say? Um, chronologically, uh, we can show the from early Joseon period, which is 15th century, to contemporary painting. But we do not have a Korea period painting at the moment because it is really rare and yeah, it is really rare to find. So, um, so looking at other medium, for example, ceramics can be shown in a most comprehensive way, like in a chronological way. So we can, we can show from the fifth century to the contemporary by showing the ceramics. But for paintings, we have uh, some good paintings, but um, if we, we, we cannot show like the whole history of the painting. But we are uh, planning to expand our collections. So that's what we are aiming to. Wonderful, thank you. So I have a question from Theana Vigo. Some apologies, I've got a little mark on my screen, which doesn't help. Um, for Meijun, would you talk about the glues used for the fabrics on the scrolls? Mm, glue. The glue, glue adhesive. Are adhesive for consolidation or lining? Um, if we go for consolidation first and then lining. <laughs> okay, so 
Usually, uh, usually it's, uh, in East Asia, it's uh, two kind of the uh, uh, adhesive use. First is uh, animal glue, and the second is uh, the vegetables, uh, grain, powders, uh, glue. Is, uh, it's, uh, we can say that we start paste. We are usually used in the conservation area. The, but it's, uh, some uh, conservatory used to use it, uh, the rice from powder or mice, even the with starch, they used to use. But in our museum, we use just the with starch paste uh, for lining or repair, this kind of things. But it's, uh, for uh, some uh, fragile, it's a pigmented area to uh, consolidate, we used to use. Uh, or, so, uh, mainly uh, three kind of the animal glue. First, the uh, icing glass. We can say it uh, come from the, uh, the uh, fish. The, and the uh, uh, nikawa is animal glue. It's a general. It's, uh, it's, uh, we can extract it from the uh, ox, uh, the skin, or uh, uh, bones, and all kind of things. And uh, another thing, rabbit uh, glue, we used to use. For example, is uh, for my uh, consolidation the folding screen, uh, I mainly use uh, rabbit glue uh, because uh, this one is much cheaper. And these are uh, some scientific uh, they uh, discovered rabbit glue is uh, less acidic than others, so we can say very good. But uh, some uh, scroll painting in this case, I prepare to use a uh, icing glass because it's uh, much more flexible when we roll and unroll, so it can be changed. It depends on the painting format and this condition. Thank you very much. So I have a question for both of you this time. Um, the, the unmounted two orchid paintings are remarkable. We agree completely. Um, it's been kept unmounted for 100 years. How did you, con did you consider other mounting styles for them? Uh, probably uh, I should uh, discuss this one. For the orchid the painting, originally uh, when we found the with the previous uh, conservators, uh, Eleanor Hyun, it's uh, very interesting because uh, we can mount uh, several things. The uh, first thing that we found is that because it's the painting itself is not very big, mm -hmm. so, so we thought it's a uh, make uh, some album format, but it's uh, to show is uh, in a display place. Uh, Probably is that the uh, scroll painting is much more impressive. So finally, we adopted this uh, format finally. But it's, uh, if we want, if even the uh, two panels, the uh, folding screen also, we can do. In this moment, uh, like uh, current said, uh, another is that the two panels of uh, painting, we can uh, display in plot. This case, as uh, it looks like a Western painting, frame work is uh, much easy, but it's uh, give us uh, some uh, idea. Originally, it's uh, come from the Asia, especially Korea. I think the uh, folding screen format was uh, much more suitable. It's the um, best choice, uh, I think. And I think it's very important, isn't it, those conversations between yourself and, the, and our curatorial colleagues to help get a, get a consensus of opinion as to what, what will work best. Thank you. Um, I have another question, this time from London. On Chinese mounts, which use two colours of silks, we use Jing Yen or Fu Tai. Do you use them on Korean paintings as well? Yes, of course. Uh, uh, it's a Korean found, uh, mounting, traditional mounting format. We can't think things without China. <laughs> Because Eastern Asia is always uh, a lot of the exchange culturally, and uh, it's not just uh, uh, the aesthetic one. It's uh, a lot of the material exchange and the uh, style also. Originally, uh, this kind of the folding screen uh, format we can found the center of the Asia. So the, and then it's uh, developed a lot in China from the Tang and Song Dynasty. In the, the they are alive the really standard format is very good skill. This kind of thing is uh, spread to Korea, in Japan, others that the country in Asia. 
as uh, of course originally in Korea also is uh, used to use uh, this kind of the vertical strip is uh, for hanging school but it's, uh, it depends is uh, from my observation during the, my study in the case of the uh, portrait painting they always keep this strip but in the case of the landscape or is a bird and flowers painting, they didn't have. Probably a, for portrait painting, is a, the uh, function is a much more uh, 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 ancestral the, the light. So is it right? So this kind of things so we want to give a more decoration elements. So keeping this kind of the vertical strip uh, usually. So in Korea also we can find it's a format and the proportion, the position is a little bit different. Interesting. So you use it, but it's a tiny bit different as well. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. So this was to Meijung again. Um, please, can you explain more about the method you used for bleaching the flying geese painting? Mm. Breaching. <laughs> uh, it's a uh, the probably it's a very, very important to, to how I approach mm. to arrive the breaching method. In general, in our museums, uh, we don't do uh, uh, this kind of the operation. Mm. But it's a uh, the curator is a specialist. Uh, she requested to us is uh, because it, the, the characteristic uh, the painting itself is a white the vacant space is really important aesthetically. If for the keeping is a brown, it's the stain is remaining, it's not really, really good. So she is asked to me, so I start the research. It's a, first day is a, with my colleague, Western Paper Conservation Studio and the Hiram Studio colleague. They are not very familiar, these kind of things. But in the museums, we used to use a, Lighting is a breaching method, but it's a, I, when we try to this one, the problem is that we have seal, is that this one is a, a kind of the pigment. It's a, the, the pigment, uh, when it exposed uh, some kind of the light, can be uh, uh, change the color. So I think it's not really good method. Of course, we can use uh, it's a, another method, but finally, the the factors uh, to, to consider to choice uh, this uh, method, first is the size. Light uh, bridging method is not adequate for large painting. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, in the case of the, uh, some pigments, it's very sensitive with the light, it's not very good. So I couldn't uh, use it, generally use in the medium, the, this one. And of course we can use, uh, it's not it's exactly the, for bleaching, ammoniac uh, solution also we can use uh, to retain some stain, but it stain can cause some uh, bubbles between the fiber, can cause another problem. So I think the, for conservators' uh, security and safety and the uh, studio itself, the peroxide ox the oxide is the best solution because it's a quite center and it's not very uh, harmful for conservator. And this, I just use a very light one, 0.1% to uh, almost uh, two, 3%. It's not really strong. So this kind of things uh, are, I'm using with the sprays all around and this very thin, uh, accentuated area, I use a quite high uh, uh, percentage. So this one is a gradually, it looks like a, a painter is a, making a gradations at the uh, gum. So I applied like this. Thank you very much. We have a, a question which I think we, 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 we are all three able to answer on this one. So I can't tell by looking at the picture if the 12 folding screens, if they are all joined in one or a pair. They're all joined in one. <laughs> it's one very large set of 12, um, 12 screens, which is um, part of the complexity mm -hmm. of doing that job, wasn't it? Brilliant, right, I'm just going to... Um... 
Uh, another one from Meijung about materials. Um, do you measure, and I'm, you used nano restore gel? Yeah. yeah. And it did it work more effectively than other methods? And did you try other methods? And what was the difference? Uh, yes, because I, uh, basically I studied uh, conservation in Paris, uh, Western paper conservation. So I always curious uh, Western method and the new material for conservation. So the recently uh, nanocellulose uh, gel is uh, introduced. It's uh, very curious. So by curiosity, I start <laughs> using very honestly. But it's uh, some advance, disadvance, uh, using this one, because uh, when I use this one, it humidified really thin layer of the silk or lining paper to remove this kind of things. Uh, underneath the nano gel, is, uh, it was not clear is, uh, how much is uh, damped underneath. So I applied the use as, for example, uh, fiber is a really thin fiber is that they use also, and the gel is a, can uh, remain some residue on the silk or paper. So to remove this, this residue itself is not very easy, simple. So I prepare that something is not the remaining the, the residue on the historic amount elements or painting itself. So the, this kind of things are come rigid, we can take off very easy one. Easy one. So the nanocellulose gel was uh, very interested, the, but uh, the I microfibers uh, tissue also, it was a very good uh, effect. I think I prepared by very honestly microfibers uh, tissue was uh, much cheaper and is, uh, easily we can adopt all different shape. Thank you very much. And I have a question from Yilim Lee for Sanger. Um, is there any special arrangements in the painting, the scenes of life, or something which rules which story is placed in the paintings at that time? Oh. So, so are there any special arrangements? So it, does it have to be in a certain order, I think? An is order, what yes, yeah. yes. It has a specific sequence because it shows the narrative of a person's life. So it usually starts with the first birthday and then wedding and then pass the civil examination and then promote to a higher, higher, higher position and then have 60th of anniversary of wedding and then retirement with 60th anniversary of passing the first civil examination. So for the five confusion virtue screen, it doesn't have any specific order. There are other examples of 10 panels or like eight panels or some like just individual paintings, but because each painting has different story, so it can be arranged by needs of customers maybe. But for the scenes of life painting, it has a specific sequence, but there are variation. There are some six panels, eight panels and 10 panels. So if it's like 10 panel screen, like, you know, our British Museum example, it, the life should be longer and then have more events. Yeah. Wonderful, thank you very much. We have another a, a comment about nano gel. So um, there are, the, stating that the textile conservation at the Mu Metropolitan Museum of Art also started to use nano gels and they come in three different kinds. Which number of nano gel do, do we use? We use number six. <laughs> Marvellous, thank you very much. And I'm sure that would change depending on what we needed to do and how it all works. Uh, I tried to difference, I forget exactly so which number. I tried the several things, but I found that uh, number six was the best uh, solution for my purpose to use. Thank you very much. And then Thea, Theana has um, contacted us again about what are the environmental standards for the silk and paper scrolls whilst on display. Um, and we have a wonderful preventive conservation team who help enormously on this side of things. Um, so Meijun, can you remember exactly what the um, conditions are that we've got up in that gallery? 
Oh, gallery is uh, the full display? Yeah. Full display house. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We would need to double check. Um, but we do have them on a, a, a good rotation, so they're not on display for, for a, a very long length of time on the whole, are they? How long is the current temporary exhibition on display for? Six months. For six the Korean months. Gallery does two rotations every year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's an important factor in looking after the mm -hmm. collections for longer term uh, around those display conditions mm -hmm. is the fact that we also recognise that light is a big impact on, on the paintings. Yeah. Brilliant. And then um, another question has come in saying, for both of you, saying, do we have special boxes for storage of the Korean scrolls in the British Museum? Scrolls? Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. It's uh, after the survey for the second year's uh, uh, for the scroll. It's, uh, it's, uh, I uh, identified some traditional, uh, we can say traditional wooden uh, scroll storage box. I identified the carpenter also in Korea, but it's uh, because of the pandemic situation. It's much more complicated, so we, so with the Hiram Studio, the colleague, we made the decisions and uh, identified some model. Is that this model is uh, used to used for free gallery? Is uh, that because uh, the some uh, Asian scroll is that the box is uh, orders in place is mean is a. Uh, Asian carpenter is very expensive and the transportation is not simple. So I think in uh, short term, it's a long term probably that we can uh, adopt this a very high, really high quality, but a museum standard uh, boat, box, also I think uh, very good quality, I think it's just you know, over the 10 years, I think it's no problem. So we made a decision and then uh, we start this, uh, uh, commissioned. This mm -hmm. one is already set up, and then um, after the measuring each scroll, is uh, with uh, all the Chinese uh, counter, uh, curators that we discussed already. So what we're, we're trying to do as well is make our storage as efficient as it yes. can be because when you've got larger storage solutions you use up more of your storage space, so it's about that careful balance of the right materials for the right objects in the right space. And I know a lot of work has gone into to, um, to purchase um, acid-free card boxes to look after a lot of the Asian scroll paintings, not just the Korean ones. Yeah. Absolutely, okay. So I'm just going to check any more questions. For Mei Jung, and, and this is around all your field work, um, are there any Korean weavers that specialise in mounting silks, in uh, making those silks for, for the... Yes, not uh, in Korea, it's, uh, several uh, weavers, mm. but there is uh, no the weaver just to specialise in mounting silk, uh, because it's, uh, originally it's, uh, in the, the past, all mount silk is uh, used to use for ordinary clothes. It's uh, almost the same things. Uh, among the, the, the variety of the clothes we can find in our life is something is adequate the for uh, folding screen or skull. Is that we can select it some motif, much more adequate, very gives a very good symbol, or is a thickness. Because in the case of the the scroll, is a thick uh, thickness is quite important. Can uh, the impact is uh, the, some uh, flatness the uh, finish it, uh, the painting. So uh, I can say <laughs> the not special uh, the reverse uh, just a for folding screen uh, folding mount silk no, but it's uh, the problems are for. Um, our uh, purpose uh, for uh, Mount Silk, we can order, customize some pattern, some thickness, some color. We should order like this. 
In this moment, the weevil can adopt. They can select the specific uh, thickness of the uh, thread mm -hmm. and the quality. This, so we can do like this. I don't know if that's a very good uh, answer or not. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and so, so there are weavers who are very happy to take those special orders? Of course. Yeah. Very, because of all weaver also is a very good opportunity to uh, 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 broaden their activity mm. and there's a for example, it's one of the weevil is they, they are just a weave is a flat one, plain one. If we order some the uh, some patterns, very interesting because for them it's a new challenge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you. That's great. We've done that. And our last question, um, as far as I can see today, because I've got no more coming in. Oh, I. There is another one, so we've got two at the moment. Um, can Mei Xiong tell us more about her materials research and if there are any suppliers she would recommend for scroll mounting materials? Okay, it's a very, very complicated. For me also, mm -hmm. I was, was really staggered to resolve this uh, problem. Is, uh, the, in the case of the papers uh, for uh, lining, uh, I think in Korea is, uh, we can find the several paper mill. It's a uh, each paper mill is a uh, the, the, even so we can say traditional Korean paper, but it's uh, a little bit different uh, the characteristic. So for example, is uh, for you know, my paintings treated, the in the case of the hanging scroll. It's a flexibility is quite important. So uh, the, I use uh, the Mungyong Hanji. Mungyong the Hanji is much more soft mm -hmm. one. So I applied for hanging school. But it's uh, the problem that just if apply the, the Mungyong Hanji, it's not very good because it's quite uh, some another problem that happened. But we should be compromised with something is a really resistant paper and sometimes very soft pa paper, two kind of things. And then I used to use uh, Shin Hyunse. The main is I used uh, Shin Hyunse Hanji because it's very resistant, it's very pure, it's a quality, so I'm used to use. And then uh, we can find another paper also, it's another uh, paper mill. But in this four hours uh, project, uh, I used to use uh, two paper mills, and this the silk, really <laughs> big problems <laughs> for me, <laughs> because uh, many uh, Western colleagues uh, do think, oh, why you can't buy silk? Of course, if we could go to in Korea in market, we can find a lot of uh, the silk, but it's not everything is uh, for our purpose. Mm -hmm. This is a problem, so I always uh, try to Go directly is a silk uh, the uh, manufacturing the center, and discuss which kind of the silk I need. And this I should check uh, uh, ability. There's uh, the how, which kind of things they can do. In this moment, I can adopt. So what I need. Thank you. Oh, fabulous! We have some more questions in. So thank you, everybody. Um, I'm interested in the vivid green, red, and blue pigments on the five confusion rights folding screen. Were you able to carry out scientific analysis and identify the pigments? I'm going to say we're going to hold that question for tomorrow yeah. when we talk to our scientific colleagues, but hold that question because that's a really good one. Um, And another question, um, and I think actually you can both answer, I, I have towards this one is, how would you, would you keep and store the original wooden cores to the 12 panels folding screens? So do we keep the original cores? And how, how, do, how do we look after those? Uh, <laughs> uh, for this uh, project, uh, all kind of the painting, I try to keep all material used. 
for example, even the, the landscape uh, the I pre, uh, present and the size I present in her presentation, this kind of things are lined with the paper. Even this one, I keep. And then in album format, I keep in painting itself and the lining paper come from the original painting. Because uh, before, the, we used to use, uh, use the throw away, dispose it, it. But uh, now, even the lining paper or, the, for example, the inner core, everything is very important mm -hmm. historically. So I try to keep everything. So I develop how we can keep this kind of things very well, very good, and then not to uh, damage the originality. So some, because 12 panels, a lot of things, so I can test uh, several things. <laughs> Everything's uh, uh, sheet by sheet or pieces by pieces. We can do like this or I can keep in uh, a whole entity like I, we display in the gallery currently. The two methods I'm trying. Just add something to Mi Jung's answer. Um, Mijong did a really great job in maintaining, keeping the original lining papers and frames. And um, yeah, in the gallery, we are displaying the original frame for the five Confucius virtue because it, uh, it can be a great resource to understand the original frame. So, and then also lining paper help us date the painting. So, um, yeah, I think we can find more like behind story of the painting by looking at this original one. So I think it's it's great to it keep some really of them. Mm -hmm. We can discuss more tomorrow uh, with uh, specifically travel panels. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And we have a question from Jennifer Perry. Uh, Mejung, where did you obtain your hands-on training for mounting scrolls? Are there formal training programs for this practice? Okay. <laughs> thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, thanks to her, uh, I was invited in the Metropolitan Museum. I, I had uh, no occasion to discuss uh, more about our work. Uh, training is, uh, is really important for Eastern Asian painting. Conservation is really important. Uh, in my case, it's different from the, the, my colleagues, uh, Churashu and uh, Kyoko Sukinaki. Uh, they trained in uh, Japan, in China. But in my case, uh, originally I studied Western paper conservation. It was a very good base because uh, even so I don't know mounting skill, school mounting skill, but it's understanding how we can approach Western way is a conservation uh, approach. It was a very good thing. And then if we can adopt the mounting skill, in the Hiram studio, I uh, start uh, taste uh, Japanese uh, scroll mounting uh, skill. And then if I found some occasion, go to Korea, it's uh, during the summer holiday, two months or three months, I used to go to uh, Jongjae Conservation Studio or Mrs., uh, Mr. Bach's Charles Studio. It's, uh, I learned from them. And of course, uh, the school mounting skill, China, Japan, Korea, we can find some common things and some other uh, specific things. It's, uh, I am really lucky so because I'm working in Hiram studio, I can compare the difference. So in this moment, uh, I keep it some, uh, for example, is my PhD is uh, focused on the historic chosen uh, the, uh, mounting skill. In this kind of the skill, without understand the skill, mounters the skill, we can't understand all the mountains, the historic things. So well, thanks to the uh, Mrs. Chu, I learned Chinese uh, the mounting skill, and thanks to uh, uh, several uh, the Chinese Japanese uh, conservators, uh, I learned that Japanese skill help a lot to understand. It's uh, basically. It's a training. It's a, um, I think it's a, not just a, with a skill we can access to conservation Eastern Asian painting. Skill we can learn, I think. Mm -hmm. But it's a, a very good uh, approach. It's a, the, uh, 
attitude as a conservator and this understand the object itself is really important. Uh, because uh, when I start this uh, learning uh, scroll mounting, for me it's a kind of a myth. Looks like I, can, I should approach something in the uh, moon. But so, over the, the, my experience now is uh, over the 10 years, I found this is uh, just a skill. But it's, if we concentrate some method, we can learn some method. But it's, uh, making the uh, scroll mounting is not enough for conservation. We should learn on other things, how we can approach, how we can apply it, all our skill, material, and this, uh, the, with the uh, uh, the colleagues, for example, scientists, and the, the another is uh, um, uh, colleagues in the museum curator, we should uh, discuss to arrive to one painting conservation. And I have a, a, a short follow-up question to that, which you may or may not be able to answer today. Um, is are there any formal training courses in scroll mounting in Korea? Or is that done through the workshops? Because I know that's a lot of the experts that we uh, have had visit us have been through the workshops. Is there any? Yeah. I think you can answer. Uh, so, uh, because I <laughs> answer too much. In Korea, is, uh, the, I think so, um, in comparison with uh, Japan in China, quantitatively, is, uh, the, uh, our field is uh, quite small. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's uh, quite easy. It's very, it's not easy, very complicated. So, uh, th uh, because I used to go to Korea from the when since I was a student, so I have the luck. Uh, lucky is that identify the really good conservator mm -hmm. in local. Yeah. So in this month, uh, they uh, very generously give us opportunity training. In their studio, I learn thanks to, uh, thanks to them, but it's not easy. So it's a uh, you and it's, uh, in Korea it's, uh, during the occupation, Japanese, we lost a lot our mm -hmm. tradition. But it's, uh, now it's Korea is uh, we try to reconstitute it's uh, all our tradition thanks to many conservators uh, working with uh, patients, <laughs> our uh, culture. So I think. Uh, Soon, I already changed a lot. When I started uh, scroll mounting so 15 years ago, it was really hard. But now the situation changed much more different. So I think. <laughs> thank you. And thank you both so much for, for chatting with us this afternoon. It's been really fascinating. We've had some great questions, I feel. And, and you've been able to feel them beautifully. So thank you. So, I want to thank our speakers today, uh, Meijun Kim Marande and Sanga Kim, and to the audience for all your questions, which have been really interesting and made us have a little think in the process of answering them. Once again, I thank our generous funders, the Amori Pacific Corporation, and our partners, the Amori Pacific uh, Museum, the Korea Foundation, and all the contributors, both in Korea and in the UK, to the British Museum's Amori Pacific project. I hope very much we will see you at the same time tomorrow afternoon and look forward to more talks and more questions. Thank you all very, very much for attending. <laughs>